big noon Saturday's game. Gus and Joel and Jenny will be on the call for that. I got to ask, what are you looking for from Ohio State in this game? Maybe to show that they're not yeah. going to go the way they did against Northwestern? Maybe? Well, I, Indiana's not – that's not a problem. I mean, even if okay. it happens, right. we saw what happened. My thing is, like, I, I want a little sense of urgency from, from the fellas up front, man. Like, come on, guys. Like, you're a bunch of four- and five-star kids. Like, can we can we see a little, like – yeah, like, uh, like we're better than Indiana. Let's just kick their ass. Like, you know, they haven't really done that at times. Their offensive line is frustrating because they, they can be much better in my opinion. Like they have a talent. They just, they just year after year, that's kind of an issue. Um, but you know, I have been a doubter of Michigan all year. Like, Oh, how's it going to beat them again? Like, uh, uh, eh. I know not again, but you know, like, but like, I just, I got to see, I want to see the physicality. I want to see that show up against a bad Indiana team, right? I want to see running the ball. I know you're out, you're running back. I want to see running the ball again. I want to see kind of like this physicality return to this team a little bit. Um, And it's weird to say that because their offense is still really good, right? If you look at the efficiency numbers, they're great. But that's what I want to see this weekend. Like Indiana is an inferior opponent. You should dominate inferior opponents. And even I know it was rainy and windy in Northwestern last weekend, but like, come on. So I, I want to see that this weekend is they get, you know, kind of into, into really kind of preparing for, for almost Michigan mode to get Maryland and then Michigan. So I want to see that RJ. I want to see that like an oomph from the offense. Um, and if I have to see JTT make one more play, I'm going to be very <laughs> upset because another one got away from the West coast. Another one did, um, man, that kid is, whoo, he is, is advertised. So I just want to see the offensive line kind of come and bring it on Saturday against Indiana. It's a great point. JT turnovers, JT Tui Maloau has been outstanding. Ugh. Had one of the best games we've seen by a defender maybe in 10 years. Like I think you got to include Chase Young and Dominican Sue in there, but I take it all the way back to 09. To your point, though, about the offensive line, a couple things there. Uh, we got to go to, or I should say, I and producer Tyler got to go to Ohio State to see their game against Iowa. And uh, producer Tyler was like, Dewan Jones is enormous. That, that is their right tackle, uh, and he is. And you look oh, that, at that that offensive line, yeah. and you expect them to be able to mash. And frankly, if you're a Buckeye fan, you don't feel good about your inability to run the football against teams that are inferior. Now, it came on late for Mayan Williams when they hit, I think he had 26 rushes for 111 yards in their win, 21-7 against Northwestern. And the conditions were frightful. 50-mile-an-hour gusts. You're also playing in the rain. You're not really in a in a passing situation, though I think C.J. Stroud managed to pass for 79 yards and rush for 76. It's that kind of game for them. However, those are the games in which you're supposed to impose your will. And knowing that yes. you've got Michigan really playing great football, particularly running the ball, you got to be able to run it against them. Otherwise, it's not going to be as difficult to Correct. stop you, even when you have those four and five stars on the outside and C.J. Stroud, a Heisman candidate at quarterback. I'm with you. I want to see them physically. I want to see them out man someone particularly in indiana now in indiana's defense they beat illinois which until michigan state did it last week was something nobody else could say right now yeah. we were looking at that going illinois what happened to you and as more enthusiastic i'm more enthusiastic about going hey indiana might be that good at least defensively now they started a, they started a quarterback last week in jack tuttle who was also in the transfer portal you got to be able to take advantage of that if you're ohio state right like that indecision or at least that indecision in the place of person playing quarterback ought to speak uh, volumes in as far as what you should be able to do against Indiana. But again, to your point, we want to see them just blow out Indiana, beat an inferior yes. opponent, and prove that number two ranking. Yeah. Yes. Like, yes. Like I, 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 people often say when discounting teams is that, well, they didn't play anybody. And that's certainly true. There are teams that have lighter schedules and that's, and that's the way it works. NFL, college football, but to me, if you dominate inferior opponents, that's okay with me. Like I check that, like that checks the box. Okay. Now, of course, when you play better teams, you still have to bring that same game. And 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 of course, playing better teams typically prepares you for better teams later on. But to me, if you dominate bad teams, that still means you're a good football team. I, I used this earlier against USC. Like they're not dominating bad football teams, right? Like, oh, so I want to see Ohio State dominate Indiana. They're a bad football team. Put your foot on their throat and win the game by a lot. That's what you do if you are the second best team in the country. I'm with you. I think we're in agreement there. I would love to see Ohio State at least uh, show us, or Michigan for that matter, show us that they are going to be a challenge for Georgia in a college football playoff should they get that opportunity. 
Uh, next game on the schedule for us, number four, Texas Christian at number 18, Texas. <laughs> Very fascinated by that game. Uh, we also have a fan question that corresponds to that game. The question comes from Paulzer Harrison. I want to say Harrison Paulzer. Um, yes, I'm right. Harrison Paulzer. Do you think TCU can contend with the rest of the top four, Jeff? Um, no one's beating Georgia probably. <laughs> so the rest of the top four, yeah, I, I think they could hang with Ohio State and with Michigan and with and with Tennessee uh, and and uh, Ohio State, Michigan, Tennessee, kind of Oregon, like I, kind of the top hold, hold on, teams, hold, right? Hold on, hold on, uh, Michigan. No, so I'm Georgia. just talking about like the teams like in the uh, Georgia they cannot hang with. Kind of the rest okay. of the teams like around the top eight. Okay, so you're saying everybody but Georgia. Yes, everyone okay. but Georgia. All right. Okay. Um, okay. that maybe that's simpler to say. Um, yeah. yeah, everyone but Georgia. Like, there's no the, Georgia. I mean, when they there there are a lot like some professional teams that kind of show, and then like they have that important game, and they just go out and kick everyone's ass. And they're like, yeah, that team's pretty good. Like Georgia just it was kind of in that mode where like, ah, then it was like the Tennessee game. We saw Georgia. Like we saw. I mean, Jalen Carter solidified the, the first pick overall in the draft in this game, right? Like they they came to play in this game. Um, but TCU, they're great, man. They, they, their concern for me is the starting slow issue, right? Is this the starting slow? Um, and against Texas though, Texas doesn't finish well. Like, I don't know if it matters. Like, I, I don't know. I, Texas can certainly score a bunch of points in this game and I'm sure they will, but I don't know if TCU starting slow will matter much in this one, right? RJ, like, I, like, what is Texas path to win right now? I, they have to win this game in the forties, right. Probably to win this game. Like, I, I just don't know if Texas and the analytics, by the way, put Texas as the favorite in this game. I don't, I don't see it. Um, but to so me, I just the spread. Yeah. I believe the spread. Yeah, does I, too. yeah. I think the spread is like, it was like seven. I think I was actually going to look that up right now. Um, the spread is seven. Oh man. Mr. Tyler, is, if you can get that to us, uh, let us know. Cause I'd be interested. Yeah. I think the spread is seven. So, um, yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty big spread for a ranked for a TCU team. I just don't think Texas can do this, man. I don't. What is what is shown? I guess the Bama game maybe showed that, but other than that, this year again, they in these games like you expect them to win, they just they just don't do it very. They just don't do it enough for my in, for my liking. I don't. It's more of a of anti Texas take than like a pro TCU take. Well, I, and I can understand that, right? As a guy who was saying that Texas is back and they showed what they're capable of against a good Alabama team, maybe not the best Alabama team we've seen in the last 10 years, but good enough, right? Especially with a first-year quarterback and going into year two of the Steve Sarkeesian experience. But I'm with you in as far as Texas Christian suffers the same problem that Ohio State does. They start slowly and they live to come back in the late third and fourth quarter to win football games. That really does annoy me. but. I also don't believe that if you put Texas Christian in the same game with Michigan and Ohio State, that you're going to get a game. I think that it would probably be the kind of spread that we're looking at for Texas, where one is a seven-point favorite, which says more about what Texas isn't, uh, or, or could be, I should say, than what Texas Christian is. Because I'm looking at this, and I'm going, Texas is the most talented football team in this league, and one of the most talented football teams in the sport. You ought to beat up on a TCU, but frankly, yeah. TCU has got some gestalt going on. They are better than the sum of their parts. They started yeah. Chandler Morris this year. Max Duggan came off the bench. He's played himself into yeah. a fringe Heisman candidate. Kendra Miller, the best tailback nobody talks about. Joe Gillespie, a guy I'm very familiar with uh, as a defense coordinator at, at Tulsa, developed guys like Zayvon Collins. He's their defense coordinator at TCU. They play foot nine. They rush the passer. They play outstanding man coverage. If you can do those things against Texas, you can win. But Quinn Ewers is special. Bijan Robinson is even more special. Oh, that's good, yeah. I'm not really convinced that Texas Christian could go beat Texas, and I want to be. I want to be. I want to see TCU show that they can do what Georgia does. To your point, Georgia is a team that I think it's their youth that shows against Kent State and Missouri rather than they're not that good because I thought at the time, hey, they might not be that good. Maybe Oregon's better than we, than we thought, and I still think Oregon's better than we thought. However. Georgia looks at the at the schedule and says, Kent State, cool, we'll beat them. Doesn't matter by how much. Yeah, Missouri, yeah. cool, we'll beat them. Doesn't matter how, by, by how much. But when you challenge them with putting number one Tennessee in their, uh, coming to their house, they say, okay, now we have to remind you why we are the defending national champions. I'd yes. love to see that from Texas Christian. I'd love to see them say, no, 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 this is our league now. Oklahoma and Texas are leaving. We're about to show you why. 
I, I would love it too. Um, and you know, I, I, I think they will do that, but the slow starts do worry me because like, eventually that becomes a problem, RJ. Like you can't just keep doing that and expect to win games, especially on the road. And so I'm curious if that becomes a problem in this one. If you get down 14, nothing, you let Bijan Robinson get, you know, get after things. That's a problem. By the way, I, I have a little bit of a of an early man crush on Calvin Banks, the true freshman left tackle of Texas. Now Playing he was supposed to come, off, yeah. Supposed to come to Oregon. Unfortunately, the, the Mario knew you got him out of there. He was committed to Oregon. He was committed. He left when when Mario left. I, I wonder if he regrets that now, man. You know, Oregon's got the hey, one of the better. Riley was committed to Oklahoma. Yeah, well, sure, fair enough. <laughs> yeah. okay. Touché, sir. Yeah. But like he is, dude. He guys, if you watch one, the true freshman left tackle. At Texas is really good. He is really good. Well, and it's a point that we had raised in the preseason, which was that he was going to have to be for them to have a chance, right? Because you were going to throw out their Kyle Flood and said, we're going to play our best five. And everybody looks at that and says, oh, no, that's that could be bad, dog. Like, you you probably need to play the guys that know how to play football. And yeah. Kevin Banks has played his behind off since he got there. Thank you for watching the number one college football show. Please remember to subscribe to the channel and like this video so that you don't miss any of the best college football coverage in America.